Hi everyone, welcome back to Desert Hot Forge. I am Tim, and in this video, I would like to show you how to make a hot cut chisel. But before we get started, I would like to make an announcement. I will be doing a live forge demonstration in Tombstone, Arizona at the Good Enough Silver Mine on November 24th and 25th. Everybody is welcome to come by and say hello. We have two main types of chisels. One is the cold cut chisel and one is the hot cut chisel. As the name indicate, we use the cold cut chisel to cut material while it's cold and the hot cut chisel to cut material while it's hot. These facts will determine the features and how to uh, sharpen them. The material I'm using for uh, my chisels is a water-cooled tool steel. The reason behind that is that as you work with the hot material, the edge of your tool gets hot and you have to constantly cool it in water. If we would use a tool steel that requires much slower uh, cooling temperature to harden it, like an oil hardened steel, we could potentially introduce cracks and ruin our tool as we cool it down while using it. To make our chisels today, I'm using a three-quarter diameter W1 water cold tool steel cut at 16 inches length that will give us two chisels. I'm going to work on one at each end and then cut it in half. I'm also using a two and a three pound hammer for this job today. So after bringing our material to forging temperature, we bring it on the end and start to shape the, the edge of the chisel. This one's going to be a uh, a one inch wide and a three quarter inch wide chisel for two different uh, sizes of holes I'm going to cut through. So um, I'm forging a taper that is about uh, maybe two inches long that gives me a, uh, a long taper that helps me help the chisel to penetrate the hot material much easier. I don't worry about the uh, final edge so much when I'm forging it. I'm going to uh, shape that with a uh, either grinder or a sander. So I leave about a uh, uh, just between a quarter and a one eighth of an inch thick uh, edge. Right now. After we're done with the uh, the edge, I like to work on the uh, shaft a little bit. I like to flatten it a little bit. That way we can have a little bit more control when we're working with it. Don't go too crazy. Just uh, a little bit. So after we are happy with our, the way our, our rough forging is done, we're going to straighten everything up, make sure everything is straight and the edge is centered. And then we're going to bring the whole thing back to forging temperature and I'm going to let it cool down in the forge slowly. That will release all the stresses before heat treating. Here's the other chisel I'm making. It's going to be the wider one. So I'm going to be doing the same little bit, spreading the material, just using the uh, base of my hammer. I'm not going in with the uh, cross plane because that can uh, leave very deep marks and it's going to be uh, hard to remove later. And just continue forging until I reach the desired uh, I also taper it a little bit on the side to aid the uh, penetration and uh, this gives you a little bit more of a, uh, not spear point, but similar looking uh, shape. So once we're happy with the uh, edge of our chisel, we're going to go and uh, flatten the, uh, the shaft again. Uh, if I was making a curved chisel, I normally would do the curving of the edge before I flatten the shaft, that's just my preference. So here are the uh, roughly forged chisels. I cut them around 8 inches long and I made two uh, different width. One is about an inch and one is about 3 quarters of an inch. And uh, here's one that's about half inch. I normally like to go uh, in quarter inch increments to, for different size of holes. Um, I also cut them 8 inches because I'm using these uh, pair of tongs to uh, hold them while I'm working, and this gives uh, me a very good control over them. Since I don't have a belt sander right now, I'm going to use a 4-inch angle grinder with a resin fiber disc to clean up the uh, chisels and make the edges. Make sure you wear eye and ear protection when using power tools and abrasives.
Here are the chisels ready for heat treating. I used a 36 grit uh, resin fiber disc to do the rough grinding and a brown scotch bright pad to do the finish. Uh, I like to talk about the edge a little bit. I always make my edges with a slight curve, never straight, and take off these sides. This will reduce friction and make the cutting much more easier. Also, I never leave the edge of the chisel super sharp. On the striking face, you have to uh, create a little chamfer to control mushrooming. When you uh, heat treat these, you want to only heat treat about two inches to three inches of the edge and leave the rest of the chisel soft. This will prevent fragmentation and possible injuries. Heat treating consists of two steps. Step one is to harden the steel. That makes it harder but brittle. Second is uh, tempering the steel, which makes it more resilient by releasing some of the tensions and restructuring the matrix of the material. First step in the process is hardening. Uh, to harden any tool steel, you have to uh, heat it to a temperature and then to dip it in a media to cool it down fast. This media depends on the type of tool steel we're using. Uh, in our case, we're using a water-cooled tool steel, so we're using water to uh, achieve the hardening effect. We're gonna heat our material to uh, light orange to yellow, which is between 1800 to 1900 Fahrenheit. Uh, after we dipped it in water, uh, it cools down rapidly and makes it very hard and also brittle, which is not very good for tools because it's prone to chipping and breaking. Step number two in the heat treating process is tempering. When we do tempering, we rearrange the crystal structure of the hardened material, make it more resilient and flexible, therefore more useful for tools. To achieve this, we have to uh, reheat the material or the piece to a certain temperature. In our case, we're going for a blue color, which is 570 Fahrenheit. I'm going to demonstrate two different uh, ways of doing a heat treating process. One is a two heat method, and the second one is a one heat method. So this is the first step of the two-step method, which I have the piece at the right temperature and I'm going to dunk it in the water and fully harden it. You notice I'm moving up and down, that is, and around and around is to uh, prevent any hard lines that uh, form between the shaft and the, uh, the edge, which can lead to cracks and breakage. Also moving it around so it cools faster, uh, that way you break up the steam formed around the, uh, the material. So after the first step, we cleaned our chisel off with the uh, scotch by pad, make it shiny so I can see any uh, uh, tempering colors. And I just go into the flame slowly, heating it up to uh, blue color, which is about 570 Fahrenheit. Now, if you don't have a, a torch, you can just uh, place the piece on top of your forge or in the gas forge. Uh, while it's hot and gradually heating it up. And I start to see some little bit of a discoloration. I normally start at the thicker part and go towards the edge. And if you feel like it's too much, now we have uh, yellow -ish. If it's too much, you can also control it with the uh, a bucket of water, like right now. And you can see how nice and uh, blue the edge is. So we start uh, cooling our material in the water, going up and down and around and around. But this time we don't go all the way in. We leave some of that heat there for us to use in the future. Now, we're gonna remove the scale and slowly let it heat up to the right temperature. I see the blue coming right there. Give it a little time. Okay. Until it reaches the entire edge. Yeah, it's right there. Once I have the uh, uh, tamper done right now, and then I'm gonna come back and uh, cool this completely down. At this point, you won't harden that uh, back because you don't have enough uh, heat to have the uh, hardening effect happening. So, here are the finished uh, chisels. I cleaned everything up with the uh, uh, Scotch Bright pad and a wire wheel. 
to uh, make it nice and clean. I removed all the loose scale and everything. Let's try these puppies out. So there you have it guys, this is the end of today's video, I hope you learned something new and interesting. If you like to support my channel, please subscribe, like, share and comment below. If you like to meet me at the uh, Tombstone event, uh, it's going to be on the 24th and 25th of November at the uh, Good Enough Silver Mine. I hope you see you there, bye.